and I I stood there and I just said, can I please have a test now? Because I need these test results back as I will be negative. And I, I later on, I was negative. The whole time I was there, I was negative. Um, and I said, once these go negative, am I allowed to leave? And she said, no, you're here for the 14 days. So Howard Springs is the biggest COVID camp in Australia, isn't it? It's the Correct. huge yes. network of cabins that is built to house potentially infected people. Yeah, so they are literally bringing in now hundreds of people that are of close contact or that have COVID. So it doesn't even matter if you test negative on your first test, your second or your third. They need to, because you're a close contact, you have to stay in there for 14 days. Hello and welcome to Unheard. I'm Freddie Sayers. Australia. Until recently, that country was most famous for its sunshine and relaxed attitude. Well, since the COVID pandemic hit, we've all got to know another side of Australia. With some of the longest and most stringent lockdowns and travel restrictions in the world, it's become a case study of what happens when a government will do anything to keep COVID numbers low. Their latest policy is to build special camps, COVID internment camps, to which infected and suspected infected people are moved. The biggest of these camps is called Howard Springs. It houses up to 2,000 inmates, surrounded by tall fences and carefully policed against attempts to escape. It's been described as the gold standard of such camps and is being replicated across Australia. Joining us today on the line from Darwin in the Northern Territories is Hayley Hodgson. She has just returned from a 14-day, let's say, stay at Howard Springs, and she's agreed to tell us all about it. Hi, Hayley. Hi, how are you going? So we are really keen to just hear what's happened to you. It sounds like you've had quite an interesting last couple of weeks. Take us right back to the beginning. How did this all start? Okay, so how it all started was um, a friend of mine went to work and got tested for COVID. He had a little bit of a cold. He tested positive. He got put into this quarantine camp um, and then we went about our days as normal and then the investigators starting to knock on our doors and stuff like that. Um, So then what actually happened was I had investigators come I walked out the front of just just to interrupt you. So how did they investigate you? Were, were, were you part of a contact tracing kind of list? Or? So they, what they did is how they contacted me was I have a scooter and they ran my number plate and they ran the number plates and seen the footage that I was with the person who had tested positive. And that's how they knocked on my door and knew where I lived from running my number plates. Okay. So then do they call you up or did they come straight to the house or what happens next? Yeah, so they came straight to my house. I didn't get a call or anything. I literally walked out the front and it was two undercover investigators. And they said, oh, do you know so-and-so? I said, yes. They said, have you been with them? I said, yep. I told them my whereabouts, where I'd been, everything like that. And they said, no worries. And they said, had you had a COVID test done? I said, yes, I had when I had it just because I was so scared of in the moment. And I've been to one of these quarantine camps before, only literally a month before this. So I know what it was like. I was just really scared. It was just a horrible position to be in. And I just I just lied and said, look, yeah, I have when I had. They said, you know, they, they drove off. About five minutes later, they called me and they said, we've tried to check the system and your name's nowhere. We can't find you. And I said, look, I've lied to you. I'm completely sorry. I, I'm so apologetic you know, I'm I'm scared. I don't want to, you know, this is just such a scary thing. Um, and they said, yep, righto, stay there. Someone's going to come and test you. I said, all right. So I stayed there and I just waited for someone to come and test me. No one came to test me. The next people who rocked up at my house were two other police officers. They blocked my so driveway. These are, these are actually uniformed police officers, normal yep. police officers. So then the police officers blocked my driveway. I walked out and I said, what's going on? Are you guys testing me for COVID? What's happening? They said, no, you're getting taken away and you have no choice. You're going to Howard Springs. Um, You either come with us now um, and we'll put you in the back 
of the Divi van. So, or you can have a choice to get a COVID cab. So, of course, I chose the COVID cab because I said, well, if we're to take you, we're going to um, hand you a $5,000 fine. So, of course, I didn't want that to happen. So I just said, look, I don't consent to this. I don't I don't understand why I can't just self-isolate at home like a lot of other people are doing. Um, and they just said, we've just been told from higher up where to take you. And that's all that there is. So Howard Springs is the biggest COVID camp in Australia, isn't it? It's a Correct. huge yeah. network of cabins that is built to house potentially infected people. Yeah, so they are literally bringing in now hundreds of people that are of close contact or that have COVID. So it doesn't even matter if you test negative on your first test, your second or your third. They need to, because you're a close contact, you have to stay in there for 14 days, no matter what. So let's get back to this situation at your house. So these two policeman what is the choice they give you exactly it's come with us in this van or yep. you get a five thousand dollar fine yeah so it's, you come with us we take you there and you're given a five thousand dollar fine or we will call a covid cab and right. we will not fine you so it's pretty much you have to consent otherwise you're getting a five thousand dollar fine okay so then some hours later the covid cab arrives yeah, it was probably the policeman stayed at my driveway until this cab came. They said, can you please go pack a bag? So I went and packed a bag. And whilst I was packing my bag, I had my housemates at the front speaking to them. And they said, is she able to just do a test? And once that test comes back negative, is she able to, you know, leave and come and come back to normal life? Um, and they said, these police officers said, yes, we're pretty sure you, that all you have to do is return a negative test and you'll be released. So that gave me, you know, that calmed me down knowing, okay, well, if I return a negative test, I can just go back home. So I got in the COVID cab and the police... I think we've got some footage that your mum took, actually, that we can play of you waving goodbye and getting into the back of a van. Of just um, coming, she's, she's being taken away. But look at the COVID van. How professional! Long live COVID. <laughs> that is a COVID taxi, but is actually a casino bus. So driving there, and then the police or police escorted me in, and then I never seen them police again. They left. They weren't allowed into the facility. So then new police came and they they were in charge. Obviously, I was very distressed. I was crying. I was saying this isn't fair. You know, it was just horrible to go through. And I I stood there and I just said, can I please have a test now? Because I need these test results back as I will be negative. And I, I later on, I was negative. The whole time I was there, I was negative. Um, and I said, once these go negative, am I allowed to leave? And she said, no, you're here for the 14 days. So the and first time you found out that you were there for 14 days was when you arrived? Yep. Okay, so you, you, you get taken to a room, is it? A cabin? What's what's life like inside these camps? You literally get put on the back of a golf buggy with your bags. And these people are in hazmat suits and everything. They, they don't want to come near you because they think you're infectious. And they literally drop you to your room. And they leave you. They don't come and say anything. They don't check up. They don't do anything. You know, you get delivered your meals once a day and you are just left. 